All right, guys, welcome to our weekly Wednesday Wisdom. I know that there are uh, a lot of people here on the line, and I know that there are people still coming on the line. Um, and so, you know, let's just get running. As I told you guys last week, uh, we are going to be doing, I'm going to be covering basically a several week uh, program all about sales of real estate and marketing and uh, being able to be the best wholesaler that you possibly can be. So, um, in segment number two, we're in segment number two. Um, I am going to be going into the second arrow that you see here, which is the set proper expectations and qualify. What I'll say is uh, the last training was all about building rapport. It went over really, really well. I actually got a bunch of different comments on Facebook about uh, building rapport and so I want to jump today um, excuse me jump right into our setting proper expectations and qualifying the seller so a lot of this the, the mindset here and, and how you should be taking these trainings is a lot of this is going to be over the phone right and so what I'm the perspective that you should be listening and taking notes is this is phone work meaning a seller called in, they got your marketing piece, and now you're going and having conversations about them selling the home to you, right? So um, I'm not going into, right the second, I'm not going into the questionnaire about size of the home and square foot. That's part of this, right? So the understanding, the address, the square foot, the bed bath, that's all part of what I'm going to be teaching you. But um, I want to dive in a little bit more into the real sales aspect of what it takes to jump in and, and get a deal done. So as I said today, we are going to be doing the setting proper expectations with your seller and making sure you are qualifying your seller. That is the name of the game here for this training. So I see still people are jumping on. So what is going on, good people? Um, but we are moving and grooving. So let's just jump into the first slide here. So again, for those of you who are just joining, make sure you jump in the questions. Make sure you can see me or see the slides. Make sure you can hear me um, right there in the question box. I just want to make sure everyone has all the uh, visibility of what I'm reviewing, and, and we can go from there. So if you are just joining, make sure that you can see my screen and make sure that you can hear me and we will uh, keep it going so um, alright alright I like it uh, so we have setting proper ex expectations this is all going to be about um, explaining the what when how and why okay so this is all about the what when how and why now if you imagine one of the most difficult things for a seller to deal with is if you just simply, you know, go in, get on the phone with them and say, okay, your address is 123 Main Street. So how much do you owe on the home? What's your monthly mortgage payment? You know, have you missed any payments? If you just jump right into something like that, you are going to set um, your seller back on his heels, right? They're going to get very protective. They're going to be very cautious. They are simply going to be um, more difficult to deal with if you just go in for the hard, you know, harder questions, right? Without building that rapport and without really giving them the proper expectations of how the conversation is going to go. And this is true in any and all conversations, not just with sellers, but it simply doesn't matter who you're talking to. You always want to have a serious conversation, and let people know what you're going to be discussing, right? Here's what we are going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about your property as well as me buying your property. Um, the when, the how, and the why, right? So I can buy as soon as possible. How I do that is I buy cash, I buy as is, um, and I can close quick. And why is because I'm a real estate investor, and so I only deal in cash. I don't go get bank loans. I don't need to get an appraisal done. So I really am you know, focused on a win-win solution for you that can be fast and expedited if need be, um, and then also very convenient. That is what I am trying to do for you, Mr. Seller, right? So explaining to the seller the what, when, how, and why, uh, and, you know, no particular order, right? So <clears throat> what you're trying to do is you're trying to buy a house, 
um, that you can close quick, you can close cash, right? Um, why uh, or when you can do it as quickly as they possibly can, how is because you're an investor that only deals with cash and you can close quick, and why is because you don't have to deal with a bank loan and giving them the understanding of how this conversation is going to go. Make sure they have a clear understanding that once you guys come to an agreement, um, you are going to shoot them straight. You're going to tell them what the price is. You're going to tell them the terms, the process, and the paperwork, and make sure to review that with them so that there is no misunderstanding. Is that fair, Mr. Seller? I'm just going to shoot you straight. Is it okay if I speak to you honestly, upfront and honest, shoot you straight, let you know exactly what the price is going to be, the terms, what the process is to get this whole thing done and uh, review with you the paperwork and then that way you know exactly what's going on. I really pride myself, Mr. Seller, on uh, being very upfront um, and that is why we've uh, done well over 500 deals here in Phoenix Valley is because people really appreciate my candor and being able to tell it how it is and no BS. Is that okay if I speak to you in the same manner? Right? That type of conversation is going to be very, very important because it gets them to continue to trust you, right? So you're on step two. You've already built the rapport. Now you're, you're level setting the conversation. You're giving them proper expectations and you're qualifying them, right? And so I'll give you some of the scripts and some of the questions that you'll want to be asking, okay? So, uh, you know, is it okay with you if, I, if I'd like to tell you a little bit about ourselves, who we are, what we do, um, why we do it? Again, the who, what, when, and why. Um, our process, our paperwork, so that we can both be on the same page. Is that okay with you, Mr. Seller? Yes, that is. Okay, great. First thing I'd like to ask you, is it okay if I just shoot you straight? Be straightforward with you, tell you how it is, uh, and have a you know no sugar coating conversation with you so that we can get right down to really what matters, and that's your interest in selling the home and it's my interest in buying a home. I'm always going to shoot you straight. It's okay if I just have an open, honest conversation with you, right? That would be a key question and or statement, right? It can be viewed uh, in two different ways to let their guard down, right? Let's, let's get it out there that you're just going to shoot them straight. You're going to have an honest conversation with them. You're not going to hide anything. You're not going to, you know, um, try to steal their home, which is obviously what everyone thinks investors do. And I shouldn't say everyone, but that's part of their guard um, because that's what you know they hear about in the news and, and what happened years ago. So um, I just that's you know quite honestly I would flip flop that if I was going to build this slide again I'd flip flop that and make that the first bullet point and that's simply to get out of them. Is it okay if I'm just straightforward with you? Uh, tell you how it is. Be honest with you and be upfront um, about what's going on with your property. What I think it might need the purchase price I need to have it at and how much work it needs. Is that okay if I speak to you honestly? Right there, you're getting the green light to have some of the more harder hitting questions be accepted, okay? Um, like I started this training out, very difficult um, to have a hard hitting conversation asking hard hitting questions if you don't have their approval first, right? Um, so if you go right into, hey, Mr. Seller, I'm interested in buying your home on 123 Main Street. Listen, tell me about um, how big your loan is. How long have you owned it? What's your monthly mortgage payment, right? Um, you're going into some personal stuff, and that at times can be very, very difficult for someone to receive. They don't know you. You know, you haven't done a good job being able to um, tell, you, tell them what you do, how you do it, when it's done, and why you do it, right? So you need to take these steps seriously, right? And then if they say, great, which 99% of the time they are going to say, yes, I want you to shoot me straight, right? No one says, man, you know what? I'd really just like you to lie to me today. Just, just flat out lie to me for this conversation, right? You're not going to hear that from anybody. So they're going to say, yes, you're going to say, great. And then you're going to go into um, – you know the next one which is with that said I'm gonna ask you some questions about your situation about the property the more information I know about the property the better offer I can give you so you're setting the level you're setting the proper expectations the more open you are mr. seller about your property the better offer I can give you so you know based around my my last question about being able to shoot you straight be honest with you have an open 
open conversation. And now, quite frankly, you understanding the reason why I'm doing that is because the more I understand about your property, the better my offer can be for you. Um, so is that okay, Mr. Seller? Again, you're getting these people to open up to you. You're breaking down the wall of hesitation, of reservation that they very commonly have. You are dealing with something that um, is very private for most people. Um, it's very difficult for them to come to the realization that they potentially need to sell their home um, depending upon what is happening. So you are simply setting the proper expectations and you are simply qualifying the conversation, right? So another question after or another statement slash question is after we discuss your situation, Mr. Seller and the property, I will be running some numbers and then I'm going to give you a call back. I then will set a time to meet you at the property or give you a written offer for your property. Now, that is going to be your choice, right? So um, we do two different business models here in our office, right? And so what I would really suggest is for you guys to be very, very good over the phone because we absolutely get properties under contract over the phone. We've never met with the seller. We simply didn't even go see the home, which would be a little contradictory to what a lot of you guys have heard about wholesaling and the process of meeting with the seller, shaking the hands, walking the property, pointing out some faults in the property, but we have the experience that we can actually go in there, know the you know age of the home, um, understand the situation they're in, and basically come up with a pretty good, based through our questioning, based through finding out the year built, the size of the home, the last time they've updated anything, you know, we can ballpark a pretty good number. Now, if we do that all over the phone, um, you know, one strategy of doing that all over the phone is making sure you you bracket the number. Okay, so if you're going to do this over the phone, um, which is a component of what we do, and especially in Dallas, right? We do everything over the phone in Dallas. Um, I bracket a number and say, hey, listen, Mr. Seller, I'm calling you back. As I said, I would. I really appreciate you giving me the time. Um, the numbers I'm looking at are probably you know, anywhere between 110000 and 130000 Are we in the right ballpark here? Is that something that seems acceptable to you? And you are going to get an answer out of them. You are going to get, oh, man, I was expecting 175000 There's no way I'd take less than 175000 Well, now you know. Now you know you're not even really close. Or... Yeah, that's you know that's probably about where I expected to sell. Now you're also close. Now at that point, again, if necessary, you can go visit the property, um, or you can say, hey, listen, why don't we split it down the middle? I'll give you a hundred twenty thousand dollar offer today. I'll email it to you. What's your email address? And we'll do it over the phone. Conversely, um, in a more of a traditional meet the seller, walk the property, know the rehab budget. Uh, you can set an appointment to meet at the property, meet the seller, so that you can do more of the traditional meet and greet, shake the hand, make sure that they know you're real, you know they're real, you see the property, you can point out some faults in the property, you can set the expectations physically with the owner, right? So you can say, hey, when was the last time you redid your roof? Oh, 30 years ago. Hey, when was the last time you redid your pool? Oh, 30 years ago. When was the last time you got a new AC? Oh, eight years ago, right? You can do these things in person um, to set the expectation, but quite honestly, we found as much success doing it over the phone. Okay, so that would be the next step is after we discuss your situation and the property, I will run some numbers and I will call you back. I then will either set a meeting with you, Mr. Seller, and or I'll simply give you an offer that I know we can offer on your property right then, right there. And I wrote down in the slide your choice. I'm speaking to you guys not part of the script. I should put that in a different color, but your choice is for you. It is your choice of how you want to handle that. It is not something you say to the seller, right? So the next point is what I always encourage you guys to say, um, and this would be a little bit further in front of the conversation, would be if at any point in this conversation you feel like we're not a good fit, like we just, you know, it's not going to work between us. Um, I want to let you know that it's okay to say no. This isn't going to work. And I'm going to do the same for you. Is that fair? And what you're doing there by asking that question, you are giving them the ability to walk away. They don't feel like they're stuck. And when you give people flexibility, when you give them the ability to know it's okay to say no, 
more often than not, they won't, right? They will stick with the conversation unless they really believe that you're not the right fit for him or them, right? Um, and so you're giving them an ability to let their guard down so they can speak honestly to you because you're giving them their out. So as that conversation goes, so what can you tell me about the property, Mr. Seller, right? What can you tell me about the property, right? So this is all in the front of the conversation. So it'll go a little bit like this. Let me go back to the last slide. So if, if it's okay with you, Mr. Seller, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about ourselves, what we do, how we do it, and, and why we do it, um, the process, the paperwork, and, and simply what this is all going to look like so that we're both on the same page. Is that okay, Mr. Seller? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, great. First thing I want to ask you is, is it okay if I'm just straightforward with you? You know, I'm a really straightforward shooting guy, and, and I just always want to make sure it's a win-win for everybody. So I just want to be able to always tell you how it is, shoot you straight. I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. Obviously, I want to make sure that this is a win-win for both of us, but is it okay if I just tell you how it is and just straight up honest with you? Yeah, that's, that's really appreciated. Okay, great. With that said, I'm going to ask you some questions about your situation, why you actually called in. Um, you know, I want to know more about the property. Um, and the, it, let me tell you, the more information I get, the more information I can understand, the better the offer ultimately is going to be for you, Mr. Seller. So, you know, again, as based off of what we just discussed, being honest with you, I really would like you to also be honest with me. Now, after we discuss your situation in the property, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to run some numbers, and I'm going to call you back. At that point, I'm, I'm going to, you know, set an appointment. Or, or at that point, I'm going to send you in a written offer. Does that sound good, Mr. Seller? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. So at any point in this conversation, as we begin to move forward, um, if you feel like we're not a good fit, if you feel like this just isn't going to work, I want to let you know it's okay to tell me that. It's okay to tell me no. Um, and I will absolutely do the same for you. Is that fair, Mr. Seller? Perfect. Okay. So let, why don't we get started? So what can you tell me a little bit about the house? Boom. You're right in the conversation, right? Um, or you can change that into, so why don't we get started, let me tell you a little bit about us. My name is Justin, I'm a local investor, and you go right into telling your story a little bit, and you follow it up with tell me a little bit more about the property, right? You go right into it. That's how you set the proper expectations. Here's what I do, here's how I do it, here's how, when I do it, and here's why I do it. Now, with all that, I just want to be upfront and honest with you. If you can do the same for me, that would work really well. Feel free to say no at any time, but why don't we just get started here, right? That's how you level set that. That's how you set the proper expectation and qualify their motivation. Now, here's a couple I wanted to add in here is, is um, I knew this wasn't going to be an extra long training, so I wanted to be able to give you some objections, right? So the seller might say, I thought you knew what property it is, right? So, and I'm sure you guys hear this a lot. You send out 1,000 mail pieces, maybe you're sending out 2,000 mail pieces, and a seller says, wait a minute, you sent me the mail pieces. I thought you knew my property address. Why are you asking me my property address, right? Happens often. And your response is simple. Tell them the truth. I'm a real estate investor, and I mail out a handful of letters every week into the areas I'm interested in buying in. Um, so with that being said, uh, you know, I don't know absolutely every single address. So, you know. What's the inter what, what's the reason you gave me a call back? Right? So, again, just shoot them straight. I send out a bunch of mail. I don't know every single address by heart, and then I wait to see who calls me. So, listen, Mr. Seller, is there a reason you gave me a call? I mean, just, just answer it honestly, right? The, the best way to always communicate is coming from a place of honesty. Um, never sugarcoat things. Tell them how it is. I'm interested in buying a home before the year's over. I send out a handful of mailers into the areas that I have interest in, um, and then I wait and see who calls me back. Is there any reason you gave me a call? Boom. Straightforward, right? Just always be straightforward. Another common obje objection is why are you asking me all these questions, right? Because as you go down this path, is you're going to be asking a ton of questions. It's going to feel like 20 questions. They're going to feel interrogated. So you just want to be um, is is open as possible and say, listen, I totally understand that you probably feel a little interrogated right now. I'm just trying to do the best I can to get you the best offer I can get you. I want this to be a win-win. So the more I know about the property, the
the better offer I can get you. Is that fair to say, Mr. Seller? Again, you're just shooting them straight, right? Because at the end of the day, us as buyers, if we don't have much information and we just are going off of, you know, I think, which is not the way to do it, it's not a strategy just to think, then your offer is going to be really, really low because you're like, well, I know it's, you know, 1,500 square feet and built in 50. Um, 1950. So I'm going to offer you $75,000 because I don't know much else, right? Now, if you know everything that they have in addition, that they redid the roof, that they've redone the pool, that they have a brand new air conditioning unit, that they remodeled their entire kitchen three years ago, if you know those things, your offer can go up because you start to be able to understand the budget that you're going to work be working off of, right? So again, it's just shooting them straightforward. Why are you asking me all these questions? Mr. Seller, I totally understand you probably feel a little interrogated. That's not my intentions here. Quite honestly, my intentions, as I mentioned to you earlier, is I just want to shoot you straight. And the best way I can do that is to give you a fair offer that you uh, like and can move forward with. And for that, I need to get as much information as I can. Okay, so I can get you the best offer. Is that fair? And then the third objection is you're not going to lowball me, right? I mean, that's more often than not, most sellers' main concern is. I'm going to call this guy and Justin's just going to give me a low ball offer, 50 cents on the dollar, and I don't want to take it. And I don't want to deal with that, right? So I'm going to list it. So if they ask you that question, again, honesty, best policy. We cannot, pay, we cannot play, <laughs> got to edit that. We cannot pay full market value for your property. There needs to be some kind of margin for us. Mr. Seller, as you well know, I'm an investor. Now, I don't need to get rich on every deal, but I need to have some sort of margin. I'm sure you can understand that. That being said, we are a solution-based business, and we work on speed and convenience, so we can make up for some of the maybe you know, financial situation that we might not be your highest paying client. Are you okay with that if we can give you some convenience and some speed and find solutions for you? I'm just straight up honest with them, right? Straight up honest with them. I need to find some margin. I do not, not need to be rich on every property I buy. But I, as, as an investor, as a, you uh, are well aware, you probably have made investments. You need a certain return, right? So with that being said, I can't pay market value, but I can give you convenience. I can give you solutions, and quite frankly, I can give you speed if you so need it. Is that okay, Mr. Seller? That's how you handle it, right? That's how you handle it. So this is all about setting the proper expectations, qualifying your seller, being upfront, honest, shooting them straight. So, so important, right? And to not, to not try to squirm out of the questions they're asking you, right? To, to answer them honestly, to give honest feedback, to shoot them straight, and you guys are going to start getting deals. That's just how this goes, right? And so this is step two um, of the real estate investing sales system that we built. Um, if you have any questions, no one's asking me any questions yet, which is a good thing. It means it's straightforward. If you have any questions, please feel free to jump into the question box, ask me questions, um, and I'm happy to answer them. What is up, everybody? So many people on here. Lonzo, Brett, Deborah, Kelly, Kyle, Matt, Paul, Raphael, what up? Robert, several Roberts, Robert and Robert, right? So there's... If I'm missing your name, it's just because there's too many. So, um, no questions. Oh, here we go. Here we go. What do you do when the seller says that they are talking with mul multiple investors? Well, that's a great question too, right? So, my philosophy in our office is I want to be the first in the door, and then I want to be the last in the door. So, you can do one of two different things. You can say, "Listen, Mr. Seller, uh, here's the reality. I'm looking to buy one more home." this month. I have enough money for one more home, but I'm going to talk to sev or several different sellers. I like your home. I'm going to shoot you straight. This is exactly the type of investment I like to make, but we need to make sure that we can both move forward. Let me ask you, Mr. Seller, what is the most important part about selling your home besides price, Mr. Seller? Remove price. What's the most important part? Let me see if I can make this advantageous so that we can get this done today. Boom. Hit him straight forward, right? I'm not lying to him. I'm just I'm telling them how it is. What do I need to do? Because at the end of the day, it's not always price. You know, more often than not, we get deals simply because we have great follow-up. Because we help give them a solution. Like we, we actually did a deal this week where um, it was a it was a family feud. 
right? And the seller, which was one sister, was having a feud with another sister. She had to just get it done. She wanted speed. Speed was her biggest caveat, and we got a $10,000 discount on it because the number we both agreed on, all of a sudden she said she wanted to close in the next five days. So like, all right, well, if we're going to be able to get this done, I need a discount to make it work that quick, right? Because I'm going to have to pull some money. It's going to cost me money to pull some money. I need to be able to get it in the property. So we're going to go from 135 to 125. Fair enough. Otherwise, I, you know, I got to stick to my 135 number. So I got another $10,000 on top of the deal that I already liked at 135, right? And so we're giving them a solution. So it's the great question, um, asking what the most important part is, and then shooting them straight and saying, "Listen, my offer is very real. It's right here. It's right now." Um, you know, why do you need to go elsewhere is because what you're trying to get the highest and best offer. I'm telling you, this is a good offer and it might not be here later if people start to lowball you, right? Now, what I can tell you is if you go and talk to a bunch of different, um, investors and tell them what my offer was, they're going to go up higher just to get the deal under contract, but then they're going to call you and say, I can't do it. And they're going to back out. I'm not going to do that to you. Take my offer and let's get this thing open, right? That's how you handle it, Brett. What up, Raphael? Ha! I'm a I'm a negotiating ninja. That's it, man. That's it. Appreciate it. Um, and for those of you who are interested in sales and negotiating and persuading, and I mean, I have a true interest in it, right? So I run our weekly meetings for the company, and I talk to them a lot about how to renegotiate if the seller's not open to a cash offer. Maybe do different type of stuff. So um, Grant Cardone is a great individual to to follow. He's all over YouTube and social media and everywhere. Um, he has a great training program. It's a little expensive, but it is great. Um, there's great books and audio books all about negotiating and sales, and uh, you know, there's plenty out there. So if you have an interest in it, make sure you know. I just bought a book, uh, "The Secret Powers of Negotiating" by Roger Dawson. Um, I haven't started. I literally just bought it, um, and so you know. I just have a passion for understanding the side of the world, right? So, um, yeah, you know, be a big student. Always be a big student. Brett, you're very welcome, my man. How often percentages are you walking out with a contract on the first phone call or appointment? Well, um, it's lower than I'd like right now. Right now, we track this by the numbers, right? So if it if we're doing the deal over the phone, it's it's almost never the first phone call. Almost never. Right, it usually takes up to four different exchanges over the phone for us to get the contract. Now, those four exchanges may be in the same day. I don't have the numbers percentage based off that, um, but usually it's over roughly two or three days. Okay, um, and so at that point, we have roughly a thirty percent closing ratio. Face to face. Um, it used to be a lot higher. We were actually at about forty percent. We would get right then and right there. As the market has tightened up a little bit here in Phoenix, we're actually getting a little bit closer to 20% now, but we're getting more deals done simply because we have incredible follow-up. So what I used to teach and my good friend and business partner Sean Terry used to teach, um, and I know he still does and I still do, is get the deal done right then, right there. Um, but what we have found over this year is we are trying to get the deal done, but a large majority, only 20% of our deals are actually coming from a you know, one-time appointment, one-time phone call, right then, right there. The other 80% are coming through follow-up, right? So as I started this training, I said, I wanna be the first in the door and I wanna be the last in the door. And that's all about follow-up, guys, all about follow-up. So Brett, my answer to you is shoot for a 40% you know, closing ratio. Um, you may not get there, right? So this year we're closer to about 20%, which is not great, but our closes are more because we actually have great follow-up. Robert, usually in dealing with owners in pre-foreclosure, okay, so it's a totally different conversation, Robert. My realtor said that he can list my house and sell my house at full price before the auction. Why should I work with you and take less? I generally give a value prop on closing now and dealing in cash. How do you handle this conversation? Um, I actually will flip it, Robert. So what I would do if I were you, knowing you're dealing with pre-foreclosures, before you even get to that point, I would ask the seller the question. 
hey, listen, Mr. Seller, um, I just, you know, I just want to be open and honest with you. Is it okay if we just shoot each other straight? Yeah, yeah. Hey, listen, why aren't you calling a realtor? Why are you calling me? Why aren't you calling a realtor to list this? Make him or her answer it. Flip that conversation. Um, because now you're on your heels, Robert, when they're asking, why should I work with you? Now, the way you answer that is good, right? Listen, I can close quick. I close cash. There's no commissions. There's no fees. You know, the realtor obviously costs you anywhere from 3 to 6%, closer to 6%. You're going to have closing costs. You're going to have to do repairs to the home, blah, 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 blah. I'm cash. I'm right now. I'm speedy and I have a lot of convenience. Listen, what's the most important part about selling your home besides just top dollar price? Because I can show you top dollar price doesn't mean you're going to be putting it in your pocket. Does that all make sense? So I actually, one of the first questions I want to know is why are you calling me, right? And you saw it in the slides. I think it was slide, uh, let's see here. Thank you. Slide four. Is it okay? I'll tell you. Uh, first thing I'd like to straightforward. Tell me how it is. Shoot you straight and sure. Interesting where I put it. Oh, is there a reason why you called me back, right? Um, use that, right? What was your reason for calling me and not a realtor? I would use that up front for sure. For sure. All right, all right. You're very welcome. Very welcome. You guys are great. Um, flipping the conversation. Brilliant. Have them sell to you. Sorry for all the questions. Brett, keep the questions coming, my man. Just getting started. Congratulations. Do you record your sales calls? If so, do you share them as learning tools? Um, we do not record our sales calls because then we have to tell the homeowner uh, that we are recording the call. So we do not do that. And so then we also do not send them out because we don't have them to answer that. Excited for you, Brett. Excited to help you. Be here on every Wednesday. We are going to get you going. We're here for you. Give a couple more. Any other questions? Well, right on. That is step two. Um, I will be back next week as usual. I actually will be in our Dallas location. Um, so I will be recording from Dallas. We will be doing step three next week. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys next week. Peace.